In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to solve a very common problem that people face when using the threading library in Python. This threading library allows us to do multi-threading, okay? It gives us a thread class and we can schedule a function on this thread class, on the object at least, that is created using the thread class. We can schedule a function and this function is executed on a separate processing unit, all right? Now, the problem here is that we cannot return any value from this thread, okay? We have a function, okay, for example, add, and it adds two numbers like this, uh, result is equal to n1 plus n2. Now we cannot return this result, okay? We cannot return this result back to our main thread. And let me prove it to you really quick, okay? If I do thread, target is equal to add, and then I do args is equal to five and four. And then we do thread dot start, thread dot join. Okay. And if I run this code, nothing happens. All right. And if you think that the return value is actually being stored here somewhere, it's not. Okay. If I run this code in a print statement, it's just going to return none. All right. These functions do not return anything. The only way of actually seeing this value is to print it out. And obviously this is not an ideal solution. Okay, it says nine over there. That's the correct answer. But we need a way of somehow passing this back to our main code. All right, so there's a pretty easy way of doing this. It's not a built-in method because there is no built-in or native way of doing this, unfortunately. So it's something we kind of need to implement ourselves. All right, but luckily the solution is pretty simple. We need to, we need to basically create our own custom thread class. Okay, we're gonna basically create a child class which inherits from thread. And these are basically the default parameters that they use. Okay, don't worry too much about it. And basically what we're gonna do here is just very slightly modify this class, okay? Because we have inherited from the thread class, which is from the threading module, we now have all of the functionality of the thread class, okay? Because we have initialized it over here, okay? If I replace this with custom thread, it's gonna work in the exact same manner, okay? It, it prints out nine. Now, Basically, we need to modify this very slightly. What we're gonna do is create a new variable called self.return value, okay? And this variable is gonna be used to store the return value from this function. Because the problem currently is that we can return this result, but there's no place to store it inside the thread class. So that's what this variable is for, okay? So what we're going to do now is a little fancy concept called function overriding, where we're basically going to override the functions, okay? There's a function called run, okay? Let me just show you this real quick. This is the thread class. It has a function called run. We're going to override this with our own run function. What we're basically going to do is this. If target, okay, if, uh, sorry, self.target, okay, if self.target is not none, okay, meaning that if you actually did pass in a valid function in there, then what, what we want to do is self.return value, okay, is equal to self.target, okay, and what we're going to do is pass in these arguments, okay? And we'll pass in the keyword arguments as well, all right? And let's just print this out. I just want to verify it, okay? And whoops, underscore, because these are private variables, okay? And you, you know what? We should actually modify ours a bit to fit that convention, all right? Let's just, Keep, keep everything standard. And if I run this code now, it says none. Oh, wait, of course. And now I run this, 
Uh, come on. There we go. It says nine. Great. So our code is now working. We have now successfully stored this value. Okay, the return the return value over here. We have stored it inside this you know variable. Now what we're gonna do is override the join method. Okay, and again this is gonna be very simple. We are basically gonna call the join method. Okay, we're gonna call the join method of the parent class. So we'll let it, we'll let it execute first, like it always does, and we'll just pass in the arguments in here. Okay, and once it's done doing its join business, what we're gonna do is return. Okay, because the join function from the parent class normally does not return anything. Okay, but we are going to make it return something. We're gonna make it return the return value that we defined earlier, okay? And now this function actually returns something. So if I print this out now, okay? And notice that we don't have any print statements in here. We don't have any print statements in here. We only have one print statement in the master thread. And I, if I run this code now, what is up with this? All right, self dot args. Did I give three? Okay, maybe we should not have added that. All right, there we go. Uh, might have been a mistake on my part. All right, so basically what we did here is got the output. All right, that's good. So this is how it works. And now we can do anything here. We can like even return a list if we want to, I guess. Okay, let's just try this out with a few more data types. And I know this has nothing to do with the add function, but let's just try it out. There we go, it works. Let's pass in, sorry, return, hello world. And yes, it works, cool. All right, so this is how we can do it. It's pretty simple and we're not exactly breaking any rules or something. It's a clean method, it's short code, it's portable code. You just need to replace thread with custom thread and just copy paste this code in your file somewhere near the top or in a separate file. And that's all. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's something else you want to see. All right. See you guys in a later video. Bye then.